Thanks a lot for coming in. Good morning. Happy to be here. Something about this community appeals to you? This is a wonderful place to live. <laughs> for Kelowna Now, this is Kent Molgat. And we're joined by Wendy Chamberlain and Barb Haymoor. And together you guys are Simply Spark Joy. So, you have managed to turn this Con Marie uh, craze, can I call it that? I'm sure you're going to correct me on that, into a real vocation, right? How's it going? Well, yeah, we have. So, Con Marie is um, just a take on Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo is the Japanese. Uh, tidying guru who's written the books um, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up and many people have seen her Netflix series that came out in yes. um, January um, called Tidying Up. When you get to someone's house yeah. and you see it's a big job and I think people get overwhelmed where would you get them to start? I uh, would get them to start in their closet with their clothing and um, get them to take out everything in their closet and um, from there get them to, well, actually to back up, first of all, would get them to ask why they want to start tidying. Right. So that's an important question is to ask yourself that. And then the second question is to visualize their ideal lifestyle. Right. So, because you can get tidying and then you can sort of lose the momentum. And if you have the visualization in the back of your mind, it keeps you motivated to finish right. the tidying journey. The one message that gets through right away, I remember talking to people who had done something like this, and it's that holding the item up and asking yourself, does this spark, spark joy? joy? Or I guess in other words, do I really want and need this item or is it just cluttering my life? Is, is that how it goes with each mm -hmm. item? Mm -hmm. So everything, what Marie Kondo suggests is that you hold each of your items. Um, um, to your heart and we start with clothing to learn that spark joy feeling because our clothing we do wear close to our heart. Um, so an example that we brought today um, are two sweaters. So if I were going through um, my clothing, all of my clothing would be on top of my bed so I could see the full magnitude of everything I own. And um, for me, I would pick up this sweater which actually happens to be a, a very nice wool sweater. Um, it's a few years old, um, but I, and I did wear it quite a bit, but I hold it now, and you can just tell while I'm holding it that I, it just doesn't, it doesn't spark joy anymore for me. It's, yeah. um, it's a heavier weight, it's got a tight turtleneck, it's just not the right cut for me. Right. So, although there's nothing wrong with this sweater, I can thank it for what it, it did for me those few years that I did wear it. Right. Um, it kept me warm on cold winter days. Um, but I can donate or, or sell this sweater. Yeah. Whereas when I hold this one to my heart, um, I mean, this is a very current color for me. Um, it's a much lighter weight. Um, it just kind of lifts me up when I hold right. it close to me. I think so, I can relate to this. I think I've worn a piece of clothing that I really don't like anymore. And it's like the whole day you're kind of feeling like you're 10% reduced. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Clothing is one. What's another sort of hot spot around the house where you have to get people to start to kind of declutter? Well, kitchen's another huge area. Yeah. A lot of people don't have any organization in their cupboards, so they don't know what to cook or what ingredients they have. And a lot of it, too, is um, that Costco mentality where you people, like, buy in bulk, and they right. store up just in case they ran out of something. They tend to buy a lot, so everything and they don't have the space for it so it kind of just gets shoved in the closet and I mean in right. your cupboard and there are things you know people might not bake very often but then sometimes they do and they get pushed to the back of a cupboard and yeah. you, you're not sure what's back there yeah. so is it partly to do with sort of reorganizing in such a way that you can see what you have or are there tricks well it's the same as the closet you take everything out of your kitchen and we just sort of take everything out see what there's check expiry dates a lot of times these spices have expired if they're still hiding in the back of the cupboard you actually see how many mixing bowls you do have because they're all together I mean we don't need 15 mixing bowls and we have seen that right you just need like which ones truly spark joy and which ones do you need good question though for spark joy in the kitchen some people would say well you know how do you decide if something sparks joy in the kitchen 
Well, a can opener, just on its own, doesn't necessarily spark joy. But it's really nice to have that can opener um, to open your can of tomato soup. Right. It sparks joy for its function okay. in your life. Once you go through this whole process, including maybe, you know, um, like the garage, which mm -hmm. you, that would be a tough one for me. But once you've gone through all that, it sounds like you're saying you have more than just a tidy house, that it changes your whole sense of being. It seems like you're promising a lot there. Is it like that? Yeah, it's really neat to see um, the changes people or like our clients make in their life once they start this journey because they, they face a lot of um, emotion doing this. But they don't know why they've held on to something for so long or why they lived in a house that didn't function well. And, um, you know, it's, it's a big stressor for a lot of people. And once they eliminate that from their life, then it's neat to see the positive changes they make. When do you see so, changing people? Yeah, so some of the things, um, just in terms of clients that we've worked with, um, a lot of them have really examined their relationship with shopping. You know, we're a consumer-based society. Yeah. It's all about running in and getting something new or, or choosing shopping as an activity um, and not stopping and asking yourself, you know, am I, do I have space for this in my home and um, do I need this in right. my home? Um, other people have... Um, had a recent change in their relationship um, status and not sure where things are going to go and by tidying up their homes they're able to think more clearly and able to make a decision about that. Um, some people are contemplating whether or not to move. Um, so by tidying up, preparing their house to potentially sell, they can, we've had clients that have said actually no we're going to stay here and they've redone their backyard um, right. And other clients will say, no, it's time. Yeah. It's so time it's, it's like these things that are cluttering up our rooms are actually cluttering up our minds a little bit too. They're kind of getting in the way of clear decision making as well. It's like noise in our lives. Mm -hmm. Well, her book is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up for a reason. Marie's first book. Right. So it is, it is life-changing magic. So people could read the book or they could... Um, have the personal touch and call up you guys and you'll come in with them and kind of walk them through it right how does that look how does that work does it take a long time are you in and out in, in two hours and my life's better <laughs> well normally it's three to five hours per session and depending on um, the size of the home how many people live in there how much stuff they have will determine how many sessions they need right and we can give them homework too so if they want to do some on their own um, so you'll get them going and then come back, right? And yeah. And I think you were saying before that you like to set a deadline. And yeah, and that's different for everyone. If it's yeah. um, a, a, a couple that lives in a small apartment, they might decide that they need this done in a month and we'll get together once a week. A uh, family of four, six that have lived in a home for 15 years, that could be, uh, Marie suggests not making it more than six months long. She says to make sure you tidy in one go. Right. And the other thing she calls it is a tidying festival. Like, this is supposed to be fun. Oh, okay. Right? It's a, it's a privilege to be Do able to... Do you find that? Is once people get going, they're actually enjoying it? Because it... Well, they, after they've gotten through a few tears. Yeah. And, and there's probably some... <laughs> people, even if they're calling you, they're probably doing it with some fear. Oh, definitely. And a lot of times they, they tell us that they were really close to counseling the appointment. Right. And it's embarrassing, too, all the stupid yeah. stuff we still have around, right? You've yeah. got to just sort of, yeah. you've got to really expose yourself to, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm bad. i got all this mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. garbage in my house. Mm -hmm. and, and so eventually they get over that and start enjoying it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'll just add that um, one of the really important philosophies is that um, Marie Kondo talks about um, we're not deciding what we're taking out of our homes. We're deciding what we're bringing back into our homes. So when we talk about each category, taking everything out of your closet, at that point, everything is out of your life. Everything is out of your closet, your clothing drawers, um, your workout bags, anything related. It, everything is out of your life right now. And uh, when confronting all of your items and choosing those that spark joy, you're choosing what you're bringing back into your life. Right. And so yeah. it's, not about, it's not about standing at your closet and taking out what you don't want. Right, so it's a real mental shift. Okay, right. So it's important to, to get it all in a pile first and then put it into your life rather than making the painful decision yeah. as to what, a, what to waste or throw out. Yeah. 
So you, you sent us some photos of some before and after, and it actually gave me some comfort because I was thinking that, wow, these ladies would just, you know, tell me to, to sorry, throw so much stuff out, and I, I, I don't think I want to do that. And I look at some of them, and really, they've kept a lot of it, but uh, they've gotten rid of some, and it looks way better. I mean, but, I, but there's more going on than the way it looks, right? Mm -hmm. So have you ever had somebody come over and they're just too resistant? They just won't really go through what they need to? Oh, for sure. Yeah, not everyone, <laughs> not everyone can do it. Like someone will try and just... But most, most people that contact us are ready. Like there's something, they, they, they're, they're in their minds, they maybe don't know that they've answered the question, why do I want to tidy? But um, when they, we ask them that, they're quick to answer. I, you know, the reason I want to tidy, some of the reasons we talked about earlier. I've had a change in relationship status. I have a problem with shopping. I have too much stuff. I feel like I'm drowning. So um, they're, they're usually ready. Right. Okay. Sorry, but don't people get into this problem in the first place because of their life habits and that you guys are gone like three weeks and it looks pretty close to how it did before? That must happen. Um, it can, but if everything has a home or a place in the home, then um, usually in the, they're set up, the systems are set up for them, right. it's, it's, they don't relapse as much but and they it's might easier need, to get back on track. But they might need a refresher. Yep. Yeah. Well, Marie Kondo says you, you have to do your whole home in order for the client not to relapse. Right. One thing I saw that was really cool is how you guys stack jeans. Maybe we could just show this as an example. Sure. Because we, most of us have them, and and they can be a real jumble in a drawer, right? Well, but you've is, got this cool way of stacking. This is your typical drawer, but it wouldn't be clear, so you wouldn't be able to see what is at the bottom of this without going. Oh, those are pulling my at them, and jeans you, I like. And now you have a tussle pile. And then you, of, yeah. Exactly. So what you do is she has a special folding technique, so everything is more visible, and she also truly believes in really cherishing your items too they don't want to be stuffed in a drawer really so, yeah. almost like they you know okay so what you do you need to create a rectangle with your clothes so you would put maybe just move those jeans over so you put them like this and you get all the wrinkles out but at the same time you're sort of giving the item love okay <laughs> and just cherishing it and then you bring it up to about there and just leave a little gap at the end. And you do a one fold and two fold. And then it goes in like that. And it stands up by right. yourself. And, and then, you can see the pocket, you know which gene it is. And then once you've got a bunch of them there, you can see and choose whichever choose. pair you want and you haven't made a mess of the rest. Right, and you can, it's easy to grab one. And you usually go from, you organize them from light to dark. It's just more aesthetically pleasing right. to the eye. And you and didn't bring any, but with t-shirts, you guys go with the roll the shirt method, uh, is that? It's the same thing, you create a rectangle. Oh, it's a rectangle thing again. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and you showed me that like even with sports bras, you can get them to, because that's, how do you fold that, right? But you, you can make it look tidy. Sometimes when we give workshops, we um, ask people to bring difficult items. Well, yeah, like fold. a hoodie. Who's going to fold a hoodie? Yeah, so if a hoodie, everybody thinks, well, you know, I'm just going to hang this. But you can actually fold a hoodie, too. And you might think this is Barbara Wendy's pink hoodie, but it's actually a 15-year-old boy's. Because pink okay. is, That's pink is great. Cool <laughs> right now. Yes. So flat surface, and you want to look after that hood. And you know, fold it in. It's actually it's so from H&M, and they have a really good recycling program. If you yeah. want, if you're finished with your clothes, it doesn't spark joy. You can take it into the store. And they'll take my old clothes and give me some. They won't give you some new ones, no, but they they they, yeah. they give it away to a um, to a good. Great. So, so this is coming together. Yeah. Protecting your hood and then folding it in, three. And there and you go. You and all the items should be able to stand up on their own. Right. It's similar to how you did with the jeans. You could yeah. have like the, like the 20 hoodies in my household could all stack next to each other somewhere. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So um, how long have you guys been, you know, together as this team? And how's it going? Are you drumming up lots of business? 
Well, we took our certification um, in December of 2016 in San Francisco with Marie Kondo. So how long does that take? Yeah, we haven't covered that. You, you, go, you went down to San Francisco, and how long is the course? It was three eight-hour days. And then it took us about um, eight months to become certified. We had to do our own homes. We had to have put so many hours in before and then hand in your um, paperwork and they would look at the photos and... Um, and we actually had to write an online exam too. Like yeah. they're, they're very, you have to follow right. this, this method. All and so you're the only then certified uh, what, uh, condom Marie's? They're called? Con Marie Consultants. Con, sorry, Con, Con Marie Consultants. Yeah, we were two of the first ten in Canada. All right. Yeah, right here in the Okanagan. Okay, so um, easiest way to find you would be to find, just go online and there you'll be. Yeah, our website is www.simplysparkjoy.com and we're also on Instagram at Simply Spark Joy and our contact All right. information is there. Well, it was a joy having you guys. We never got to the kitchen, but you know. Should we just show briefly what what, well, what we do we see here? Yeah, kitchen is um, um, don't underestimate the, the fact that it's really nice to have like items together, and in um, buckets or bins that where you can see what you have. So right. this is obviously a rice and pasta um, basket that um, is from Muji Canada, right? In, in Vancouver, you can take it out. You can have all your baking yeah. um, items in one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Like I say, it was a joy. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.